Hello and welcome to a, yet another episode about personal development with me, uh, Mina van der Falk, a philosopher from Sweden, and Jonas Schurz, a healer from Holland, and today we're talking to Axel Petterson, a psychologist from Sweden. And last time we met, we talked um, briefly about, at the end, I said something like, now we, we're a healer, a philosopher, a psychologist, all we need is an artist. Then we'd be like a whole life, those four things. Uh, and I thought about it many times <laughs> since. I'm like, that. it is a whole life, it is a whole life. Um, but today we wanted to, to talk more about art. Um, uh, I suppose we'll talk about this many times, but we wanted to talk about what art does to you um, and um, like how, you, how it's part of your, your uh, landscape, your emotional landscape and your personal development even. So let's see um, what happens. We, you have both brought a um, piece of art to show and um, we'll discuss why you, why you chose them, what they mean to you, what happens when you look at them, how you interact with them, everything. Yes. Dion, you want to start? It's funny, I'm hesitating. Usually I have a mouthful, but now it's because of the <laughs> being on the spot and the vulnerability. But at the same time, uh, yeah, it, it's also nice to talk about it. So, um, yeah, art. Uh, um, art for me is twofold. I like uh, art or, or amateur hobby art, like, like trying to express myself through art. Which, which for me is usually the voice, or um, I want to revisit my my old um, how do you say old hobby playing the piano, and it's it's very it's very you know it, it there's a lot of dust literally on my piano like it's it's furniture for my cats now, uh, <laughs> but with the art bit um, I started drawing a bit lately again, and what I noticed for myself when I look at art, the art that I enjoy when I visit a museum, um, it seems to change what kind of art I feel drawn to. There were lots of times when I felt very drawn to abstract art. I would visit a museum of contemporary art and I would feel drawn to that. Uh, I've also always had a, a, um, a pull by Japanese art, the, 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 the fine artistry within the Japanese, but even until the calli calligraphic, how do you call it? writing but also the 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 um i wouldn't say sober but the very fine and the very minimalistic way that they that they make art is i find very appealing yeah and i live close to amsterdam and, and uh, i live most of my life in amsterdam and there you have the rijks museum and obviously we're, we're very very uh, how do you say um it's very abundant to live there when you have access to all those huge museum with all those classical painters. Mm -hmm. However, for me personally, uh, lately, I was drawn to some different kind of art, which more had to do with, with um, some inner child work that I was doing. Uh, well, inner child, not per se, like I have this inner child, but I wanted to visit the more soft side of myself and the feminine side, and I was writing in journals. And I had to buy a journal and that's how I came up with this art. So I was looking online for a journal and then I saw this lady, she's called Josephine Wall. She's a, a UK artist and she uh, paints very surreal art, very fantasy-like. And one way or another, I never had it as a child. All of a sudden I was drawn to this lady. I, know, I don't know if it's gonna come across, <laughs> but this is a journal that I bought. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is, I th yeah, I see Miriam already responding with her eyes. Maybe yeah. Miriam, yeah, you can jump in already. What yeah, does it do I to have, you? Yeah, I have a lot of stuff like that. I have postcards that, that look like that, that I have like on my wall, like uh, uh, on the, the edges of a big mirror that I have. Um, and I also have books like that a lot. You know, I love those things, these fantasy um, world, fantasy world, childhood mystery type uh you know i i love them i love them i never i was never ashamed to buy those things for myself 
<laughs> yeah, so in a way that happened to me that I was like, oh, I have to keep this to myself, not just a diary bit, but like, oh, that I like her, that I like this kind of mesmerizing, enchanting fairy world. And because it, it, it has never been the type of art that I would go to. And now all of a sudden for me with, with exploring my inner landscape, this appeals to me and I bought, you know, so I bought another one and, you know, so I bought <laughs> some online. Yeah, I'll, I'll show them. Yeah. And yeah, I would never hang that in my house, but, but for my inner world, all of a sudden I resonated. So that's the piece of art that I wanted mm. to bring for now. Mm. And I want to talk about it more, but I first want to hear you guys about this also, or what it does to you, maybe Axel, or about your bit. Yeah. Okay. First off, um, when thinking about the, the arts, uh, I'm thinking about, uh, this, well, some topics, but uh, I don't know if there's a line, um, what um, is included in the arts and what is not. Hmm. So I was thinking about, you know, like um, dancing and singing and uh, theater and writing poetry and, you know, novelists, um, uh, and well, all all the tops topics that can be included in this. And um, when I thought about um, art uh, in in particular, uh, what creates most feelings for me, um, it's usually well paintings and and pictures. Uh, I think. Mm. Um, otherwise, it it must be a very special um direction in in the you know if there's dancing or 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 or, or singing um just to create the feelings yeah um it was interesting it, because when when you showed your your piece um my first thought was uh, i love that kind of stuff earlier but i was kind of afraid to show it because mm. uh, that made me you know the the odd figure who, who who loved fantasy and you know bullying and and, and stuff um when you are the nerd uh, in some ways yeah mm. uh, but i really love the the stories the fables and you know when you were like four years old and and uh, you're lying in your bed uh, and your mom is next to you and reading the stories and with the, the pictures um, um, included in that. And wow. that yeah. is a very strong feeling for me. So that what happened in, in, inside of me, a lot of stuff hmm. at once. <laughs> I like, yeah. I feel it. Yeah, I feel you sharing this. Yeah, yeah. me as a four-year-old. Uh, wow. Uh, saw the picture, yeah, and loved it. Uh, mm. but mm, and then there's this other stuff um i remember when i uh, in sweden we have this uh, national museum um it's like the reichs museum uh, and i never really liked you know impressionism and where you can't really see what the object <laughs> is the realism is no uh, yeah, cube is no 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 it has to be sharp and you know yeah. very old yeah. that that's yeah. my that's my stuff um funny yeah yeah but it it could be surreal just to make it sharp then it's okay yeah yeah, yeah. i hear so, you yeah. yeah um yeah so so that's my my first Im impression i mm -hmm. don't want to yeah take all yeah. the time now so, no yeah. go ahead please <laughs> it's okay yeah yeah um, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I was thinking when you talked about these museums and um, I just wanted to say that the one thing that I really miss is going to the um, Kunstmuseet here in Gothenburg. It's the one thing that I really, I used to go like, you know, a couple of times a week. Yeah, I had this year card which costs nothing and then so I would just go there when I had time. You know, and I had these favorite mm. paintings and a favorite sculpture and I would just walk there. And especially when my uh, my kids were very small, I used to just go there and would just <laughs> walk around, look at paintings. And there are some Van Gogh and there's like, there's every, every mm. everything there. 
Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to jump in there, Miriam. It's 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 it, it's that makes me go back to when I also passed the museums mo most of the time daily, and and would go in as well with a year membership. And as you say, it's something about being around art w without having to enjoy or, or or finding something of it or having an opinion, uh, but just just being there and 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 feeling the vibration of, of mastery of a piece of mm. I don't know that already in itself is, is a is a very special feeling and um, there's also something yeah that, that what you pointed out Axel that, that I, I love very much that you say about the vulnerability I was thinking for three days about showing up here together with the both of you am I gonna share this or am I gonna go for for a piece for a piece that everybody would uh, find, uh, how do you say, real accessible art. or yeah, real art. Like 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 my my partner, uh, his father was the curator of the uh, Stedelijk Museum in uh, in Amsterdam, and all the big uh, painters were in their house when he was a child. So he's raised with art, and uh, Dennis Hopper was there, and all these people, and so he looks at this like my guy, and he would say. Yeah, that's nice, but it's not art. So he gets my story, but I mean, and 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 he he's like you, Axel. When he was four, he was into Robin Hood, and he so he loves the stories, but in terms of art, he would al already have a judgment about this because of the way he was raised. And so that's the thing. And I decided to show up here with my vulnerable bit. And um, yeah, I think it's it's important for 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 one's personal development. To, to learn to appreciate art and, and not be, uh, conf uh, well, how do you say, caught up in what it should be or what it should be defined as, mm -hmm. but more like, okay, this to me is art. Or what you said, Axel, uh, I also like photography. If someone is capable of capturing a moment in such a beautiful way or a situation or an animal or, or the cloud, clouds for, formatting, I'm like, okay, that, that's art in itself as well. So what is art and, and, and should it be uh, constrained by rules? And I don't know, what do the both of you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, vulnerability. Should I also be vulnerable and show you something that I have yes, on my wall? Let me see if you please. can see this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. So there's um, good, right? Can you see that there's a slight? It's very clear. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so this is a painting that I have on my wall, and I love it. I suppose it doesn't count as sharp. It definitely is uh, impressionist, abstract. <laughs> not in, not even impressionist because it's not trying to be of anything. Um, and I, uh, it makes me happy every day, and I made it. <laughs> yeah, you made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah great wow yeah mm. yeah i said i'm certainly not happy with all the stuff that i've made but uh, then i usually take them down uh but this is um yeah axel you said it has to be sharp so this is not sharp or i mean what do you mean by sharp do you mean i the, when you said sharp i figured salvador dali yeah you know uh, the lines must mm. be you, you can't have have it like blurry or um mm. blurry. it must be <laughs> yeah you know yeah. um like great distilliaben you know yeah that's really good yeah yeah um and uh, the older <laughs> it is the better i think uh because it's it's very very sharp uh yeah but, but that's just oh, sorry yeah sorry yeah but uh, you know it's not what resonates with my feelings it my it's my thoughts about art um uh, my feelings say well completely different uh well they they speak to me completely different uh, because i have opinions very strong opinions about blurry <laughs> stuff and you know so yeah. so it resonates in yeah in the feelings in another way mm -hmm. and let me just show you what i have on my wall mm -hmm. um Let's see if I can show it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
mm? like a 3D print um, that I bought from Poland. And for me, it's just the colors. Mm. Uh, I love, you yeah. know, yellow and uh, orange. And, you know, I just had to have it. <laughs> yeah. And it gives me energy. So, so yeah. Uh, what do you choose to, to be surrounded by? And that's my kind of art. Uh, and now speaking me. as a healer, I can sense for the both of you, it's a choice made, made instantly, intuitively. It's very yeah. primal for you as well, Axel. It's very energy based. It's what you're drawn to. Mm-hmm. And, and for you as well, Miriam, uh, the fact that you made it is, 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 is another uh, distinction. But the fact that you want to look at it, it gives you a certain uh, feeling and a certain energy. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I think art uh, is very subjective also. Uh, and how does it feel for you, Miriam, that, that, uh, for yourself to make art, to, ex- oops, sorry, to express yourself through art? So, yeah, so this is uh, like a constant struggle for me, uh, making art, uh, because it seems that uh, my, um, it's accidentally, I, it's accidental art. That's sort of what happens with, like, I, I like to sew my own clothes and make my own designs. That's very th- thought through. And um, it's like a process where I go back and uh, mend and redo and like, uh, put up the stitches again and redo them and you know stuff like that but with art it's sort of um, it, I find that it the, it becomes better if I just go like um, I'm just going to paint not think one bit what it's going to look like or what what a possible motive would be and then I go like ding, 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 you know and I and then I leave it and then I go to another room or I turn it upside down and then I come back and then I take some other colors when when it's dried you know the next day or something and that, uh, so it's it's very it's a very odd process. But the thing is, w- with this painting, I'm like I look at it and uh, it makes me happy. You know, I I don't know how else to explain this, but I'm like I look at it and I feel better than I did before. And I think for Axel, that goes the same with the colors. They do something for they, you. They do something, but do yeah, they do yeah, happiness? Yeah. I mean, I. I can imagine that you you feel you can feel like energized or talkative or or you know like uh, the way feng shui uses colors for certain you well, can use colors for certain rooms like in a therapy room you have this you, you know what i'm saying if you look at it from a spiritual point of view they they resemble the the first three chakras and uh the i don't know if you are a bit aware of the chakras Axel, like what they no, stand for no. No. So if you take the color yellow, it's about uh, it's it's energy, and it also means the sense of I am. I know who I am. It's it's. I, I will look for some affirmations that I have there. But uh, yellow is is about knowing what you want, the sense of self, the I amness. Uh, I am here, uh, knowing your course, your direction, and orange is for. Uh, um, is for is, is your sec so the yellow is your solar plexus it's the the third chakra the orange is the second chakra and uh, what re- resides there are your uh, creative impulses sexual impulses creativity and sexuality are actually two sides of the same metal uh, and emotions and if you were to take red uh, i perceived a bit of red was it true or not or did sure. it just yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah the red, red too yeah and right. the red is the sacral chakra. It's the first chakra, and and within. So also, if you look at the pyramid of the Maslow, uh, red is for your basic needs and your primal needs and 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 primal safety. So the the first three chakras are actually the most important bit, but they also uh, when they're uh, when they're flowing, when they're open, and when they're in balance, uh, yeah, it gives a lot of energy. And if it's if it's where your, uh, how do you say, if the, like for me, my upper sh- my uh, upper chakras are the most open ones. I actually always have to balance them out and be more in my uh, in my body. Um, but so for me, I can really either feel very drawn to red, orange, and yellow. Uh, but I can also feel like, okay, I'm overwhelmed. It's, I've been uh, active too much or, oh, I've been emotional too much. And then I would need less of them for myself. 
And then I resonate more on lighter colors. They call it the ascended masters, for instance, more white, more, more trans, trans, iridescent or um, uh, indigo or whatever. And then you would feel more at ease with, with very, very light colors. So it's very funny how um, feeling drawn to a certain color could do that for you, could evoke that, for instance. I yeah. love how this, where this conversation is going. I'm so yeah. interested in this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is fabulous. Because yeah, I, and it's, yeah. sorry. And yeah. looking <laughs> at Axel's house, there's a lot of white. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, Swedish houses, uh, yeah. a lot of them are yeah. white. Um, and and uh, I think for, for me, that is not a good thing. Um, I really love the color. Uh, but it's in some ways easier with the white because you mm. can always return to it in an, in an easy way. Yeah. Um, otherwise it's oh, not purple today. It's not the day for it. So, so white is, is good for you, uh, you know, with your neutral feelings. Um, and I think for, for me finding that kind of color on, on the wall, I can't really find it outside Outside, it's green and it's it's brown yeah. and it's it's gray, uh, so I can find those colors there. But I can't find it, yeah, in here. So 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 for me, it's it's well, including all the colors, I guess, uh, in some ways. Um, yeah, yeah, very understandable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I I thought about it. If that really made sense, even to me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it's also funny if I may take this art bit t towards clothing uh, and, and my personal example and then make a bridge to your piece, Miriam, because there's also uh, uh, unconscious meaning why you're drawn to your own, not your own work, I mean, but to that work that you're showing us uh, uh, when you look at the colors. But first of all, with clothing, for instance, I never wear very strong yellow, orange or red clothing. I would only do that if I would feel very good about myself that day. And if I don't mind that people look at me and, and, and I'm in the mood for action or passion or, okay, then I can wear a lot of red and then I can show up, you know, all red dressed like, okay, I'm here and I can take the center stage. But if I don't, I'd rather wear uh, soft colors like actually all of us are doing today. Uh, and uh, that's funny how that works with colors. But if, if you look, Miriam, is there still time? I think I see you. Oh, uh, yeah, it's time. telling me here that we need to stop. Um, yeah. Oh, really? How, yeah. how much time do we have? Um, Can I yeah, just do, take your piece of minutes. art? Yes, yes. To end it? Yeah, yeah, for now, for this session. Um, so your piece of art, the funny thing is it holds a lot of yellow, greenish and turquoise, if I'm right. No, it's mint. It doesn't. Yeah, mint. Much. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if, you, if you go back to the spiritual uh, uh, take on colors and the chakras, mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you look at the yellow again, I know that you also have quite a strong, I mean, I know you quite well uh, nowadays, yes. uh, a strong sense of direction and self, which, is, which, is, uh, which the yellow contains. But if you look at the, the minty, greeny, bluish, yeah, colors, uh, they all have to do with the heart chakra and the fifth chakra, where the heart chakra uh, is, this, is yeah. sorry? No, yes. yeah, yeah. It's also about about your 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 feelings, but more about the sensing, less than the feelings in the second chakra, uh, but the feelings uh, um, combined with your throat chakra, so the heart and the throat, the blue and the green, and then when you mix them. It's about wanting to express yourself, wanting to give voice to your uh, direction, to your vocation. Uh, I know that you yes. love to talk about what what moves you a lot. Yeah, here, yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and that you th that for you that keeps on. Uh, how do you say uh, moving and flowing, and you wanna uh, um, want people to join in in what you're seeing and and learning and feeling and. Yeah, and that's how, how you get moved and that's how you want to show up in the world. And that's what this painting shows for, for, for me and about this, you. And there's also like a, 
and there's some pink and then there's like a little bit of red like all through the edges has a little bit of whoops has a little bit of red <laughs> yeah very beautiful yeah yeah so art yeah there's more to come than Miriam Bright in our next yes. episode, yeah. shall we? Yeah. <laughs> Let's continue. I need to talk more about this, colors and art. And, yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you for this first episode and see you soon again. Yes, thank you. See you. <laughs>